Welcome to Edupedia World. In this tutorial, we'll be learning about arrays in Java. So let's begin. Firstly, we'll study how to declare array variable. So, do not have to create an array while declaring an array variable. So we can simply declare an array variable without actually creating an array. So it can be done like this. Where first we will provide the type, then the brackets, and then the variable name. The example are these two. So it can be done in these two ways. Either after typing the data type, we can put the bracket and then variable name, or data type followed by variable name and then bracket. Both of them are equally correct. And no memory allocation takes place at this point because right now we are just declaring a variable. Array has not been actually created. Now defining a array. To define an array or actually create an array, it can be done in following ways. So first of all, you can see we are having a variable name, then equals to, then we are using a new operator. Then we use the type and inside the bracket we give the size. So this is the example of that. We are giving a variable name equals to new is the keyword, int is the data type, and then we are providing the size. So the size over here is 10. Fine. And declaring and defining in the same statement can be done like this, where we are declaring it by a data type, providing a bracket, providing a variable name, then assigning it to new int and size is 10. I hope so you got it. Then in Java, int is of 4 bytes. So in this case, the total space taken by this array is 4 into 10, which will be 40 bytes. So the graphical representation of array is like this. So overall, you can see the upper one are the indexes. So the array starts with the index 0 and whatever the size you will give, it will go up to there. And it will contain the elements. So these are the values in the array. You can store positive negative value of the type integer if you have created an array of int. So I hope so that's clear. What happens if we define like this? So you are saying we are defining it like int bracket then prime equals to new long 20. So over here you can see we are defining an array. Uh, we have taken a reference of integer array but we are actually defining a long type. So it will give you an error of incompatible types. Why? So because it's saying found wrong and it actually required int. So that's why, uh, you know, right hand side defines array and this array variable should refer to the same type of array. So you cannot do this. It should refer to the same type. Okay, now let's see this one. Here we define int prime 100. So you can see over here it will give you an error. Because more primes Java 5 this expected, long primes 20. The C++ style is not permitted in Java syntax. So that means you cannot give the size when you declare just the array variable. You only have to give the size when you actually create the array using new keyword. Fine, so this is invalid in Java. Okay, again, what happens if? k is equal int k is equal to 7 and then we are defining long and then bracket prime is our array variable and then we are taking new long and k so this is fine you can see that over here we are defining k instead of giving a size and the value of k is 7 so the array of a size 7 will be assigned so it is absolutely fine but if you do uh, the act exactly the code below it where you know you are defining a int k and then you are giving it uh, like this and after that you assign the value of k. So this will give you a compilation error because over here the variable k might not have been initialized and you cannot use k without initializing it. That's why it will give you an error. So this is like not acceptable in Java. Okay. Now array size through input. So here you can see we are giving a input creating buffer reader stdin and new buffer reader. So basically we are reading the input of user in a buffer reader over here with this line. And then we have created a string in a data um, variable. And then what we are doing is we are entering the size of array. After that we are doing stdin.read line. So when we are doing read line 
so that means we are actually reading the line in in data whatever the user is inputting and then from that we are actually converting that to an integer so we are storing that in num after that we are again taking a array so over here you can see we have actually created a array of primes and the size that we have defined is num so over here the size of the array is something that we have taken from user user is providing us the si size and we are storing it in num and we are declaring our array with the num so this is fine because over here num is getting the value through user's input fine and in case suppose user do not give a integer value or give some you know uh, garbage value in that case it will throw a runtime exception but it will be fine at compile time okay so default initialization when array is created array elements are initialized so numeric values include int double etc and they are assigned to zero then we have boolean value which is by default assigned to false then we have char values which are by default assigned to this unicode for blank character fine and then class type is assigned to null okay after that accessing the array elements index of an array is defined as positive int byte or short values expression that results into these types so you see any other types used for index will give us error if you are using wrong double etc it will give us error it can only take int byte or short values in case expression results in wrong then typecast to int so you have to actually typecast it to int if there is any expression that is resulting into wrong okay indexing starts from 0 and ends at n minus 1 that's because it is starting from 0 okay so this is like you know you are assigning actually uh, to the second or or i will better say a third array element that is primes 2 and you are assigning it the value as 0 then you are over here taking the value from third element of a array primes and the value that you are taking you are storing it in a variable k okay now validating indexes java checks whether the index value are valid at run time if a index is negative or greater than the size of array then an index out of bound exception will be thrown fine so you have to make sure that whenever you are entering uh, or you know accessing a array you need to access it or enter the value up to the size if you go outside that it will throw you index out of bound exception program will normally be terminated unless handled in try catch so over here if you are not using a proper try catch then it will abnormally terminate and if you do use try catch then whatever you know uh, the statement you have provided in catch block will get executed okay let's see this example over here it's saying what happens if we are having a array which is primes and the size of that array is 20 so we have defined a long array of prime and the size given is 20 then over here we are assigning uh, the element on the 26th index basically it's a 25th index but the 26th element so we are defining the value as 33 so this will give us a runtime exception which is array index out of bound exception 25 at more primes main why because this index is actually not allocated a memory we have only allocated a memory up to 20 elements over here we are trying to you know assign it to 26th element on 25th index so this will give us an error okay now let's see what about reusing array variables array variables are separate from array itself like a variable can refer to different values at different points in the program use array variable to access different arrays so over here you can see we are having a integer array int primes and new int 10 and then we are assigning Uh, again you know re kind of reassigning primes to new int 50 so you can see initially we have assigned the value as 10 so the size of array was 10 but then we reinitiated it with 50 so now the size of uh, primes will become 50 so previous array will be discarded over here and we cannot alter the type of array now initializing arrays initialize and specify size of array while declaring an array variable so you see over here we have declared in prime and we are giving the seven elements as soon as we are declaring it so we are not actually you know declaring it with a new keyword but rather we are assigning the value there itself 
So this is something we can do in Java. Again, you can initialize array without an existing array. So we are having an um, even array int and then bracket and even. We have declared an array with five elements in it. And then we are again creating an array value and we are assigning it to even or what we can say is we are assigning even array to the array value. So whatever values the array even was having now will be assigned to the array values. So we can also do that that we can initialize an array with an existing array. So one array but two array variables both array variables refer to the same array. Array can be accessed through either variable name. So you can see array can be accessed through either one of the variable name. Okay guys, so this is a graphical representation of array. Over here you can see we are having the indexes and then we are having the values. So again you can store any of the values in at any index. Okay guys, so this is a demonstration over here. You can see we are having long primes new long 20. And then on 0 and first index we are giving a value as 2 and 3. Uh, after that we are having primes 2 equals to primes and so basically we are assigning primes to primes 2 and then we are printing the value at 0th index. After that uh, we are having another array primes 2 and on 0th index we are assigning the value as 5. After that we are again printing. So what do you think will be the output of this? So if you see over here the output would be 2 and 5. Why so? Because when we actually print the value of primes to 0 then the value will be 2 over here. But after that, when we actually change it to 5, then the value will become 5 of prime. So, you know, although we are changing the value of primes to at 0th index, but since both of them are, you know, locating to the same values, the value of primes 0 will also get changed to 5. So, this is the output. After that, array length refers to the array length using length, a data member of array object. Array variable name dot length. This is how you can access the length of an array. And in case of a loop, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, go through the entire array using primes dot length. This will take you up to the last element. So this is a sample code over here. You can see we are printing the length of this array and it will come out to be 20. Fine. How to change the array length? If number of elements in array are changed, Java will automatically change the length attribute. Okay. So over here you can see we are having a sample program in which we have taken int array and we have assigned some of the values to it. Then uh, the minimum value we have taken in at array 0th index and after that we are actually you know scrolling through the array completely from the index 0 to up till the length less than length because you know length will be if length will be 20 then up the index will be up to 19 so that's the reason we are scrolling till one less than length and after that we are checking if array index is less than min then min will be assigned to array index so this program will actually find the minimum uh, element from this array arrays of arrays so let's see about the two dimensional array so over here you can see we are having a two dimensional array temperature and then we are assigning new float and the size that we are giving is 10, 365. So 10 arrays each having 365 elements. Okay, in a way. So first index specifies the row. So 10 is the number of rows and the second specifies the column. So 365 are number of columns. In Java float is 4 byte. So total size is 4 into 10 into 65. So it will become 14,600 bytes of total memory allocated to this array temperature. Okay, so this is how you actually create the two-dimensional array. So this is a sample representation. You can see we can have 10 arrays and each of them having like, uh, you know, 10 rows and each of them having a number of columns is 365. So this is like just a graphical representation. Okay, so initializing 2D array. So this is how you can initialize 2D array by just giving the element there on. So you can see over here we are giving, uh, you know, five elements in each row and we have created five arrays with the five element each and we have actually created five sub arrays. Arrays of arrays of varying length. So over here you can see we can actually define a uh, array like this. We have actually declared of array variable samples which is of 2d array and then we are defining it by 
new float and we are just giving the number of rows over here we are not defining number of columns which is fine once we have defined number of rows again we can you know go to the second array since, since we have already defined there will be six array and those six array will be having you know sub arrays so and now we are going to the second index which will be our third array and we are giving it a size 6. So you can see we can define the sub arrays of a different size and then we are going to the index 5 which we are assigning to a new float array of 101. So we can see that we have initially assigned 6 arrays and inside that 6 array we can define each array with different size. So second array we have defined with the size of 6 and the fifth array we have defined with the size of 101. Okay not required to define all arrays it's okay if we just define two and work on these two then initializing varying size arrays so over here you can see we are having a you know 2d array which is called uneven and then we are assigning it the values so we have firstly you know assigned the values to it and you can see there are three arrays first array is having three elements second array is having two elements and third array is having five elements so this is absolutely acceptable array of array strength so over here we have defined a 2d array primes and number of rows are 20 now the second row that is the um, you know the array on the second index we are defining it as a new array and we are giving it as a size of 30 so now if we just try to print the size primes dot length it will give us 20 but if we try to print the length of the second index uh, array then it will give us a size as 30 Again, this is a sample program which is having a class uneven example 3 and then there is a main method. Inside the main method, you can see we are having an uh, int, uh, you know, uh, 2D array uneven and we have assigned it a value and then we are printing the row. So over here, the row changes. So you can see uh, uneven dot length is something we are, you know, navigating to the row and uneven then we are you know using uneven row dot rent so we are actually over here changing the column so to navigate the column we have used the row index and then we are navigating it to the rent and uneven dot rent will actually give us the number of rows so this is how we can navigate 2d array using uh, the length of that array so this is the output that you will get by that program now we have triangular array of array. So what are triangular arrays? So over here you can see we are having a loop, for loop which is you know initializing k to zero and going to samples dot length. So sample could be our array, and then we are taking uh, the kth index of samples and assigning it to new float that is k plus one. If it is like index one, then uh, the array that index one is having will be of size two. Similarly, if the index is 3, then the array that index size is that index of 3 is having will be of size 4. So that's why we are assigning k plus 1 to that. I hope you have got it. Okay, uh, then we have multidimensional arrays. A farmer has 10 farms of bean, each in 5 countries and each farm has 30 fields. So this is how you define a 3 dimensional array uh, for this statement. So see, it's having new long 5. So 5 is for countries and then 10 is for farms and then 30 is for the feeds. Okay, so this is how you'll assign it. And then we have varying length in multidimensional arrays. So same features apply to multidimensional arrays as those of two uh, dimensional arrays. So we are having long beans, new long then 3 and uh, 3 is like the number of rows that we have assigned since it's 3 countries so that's why I have assigned it 3 and to the 0th index array we are defining again a 2d array in that and then to 0th index and 4th element again we are assigning it to the array so you can see we can actually do a multi-dimensional array over here so that is like um, absolutely uh, fine so thank you guys this was about arrays in java we'll be covering up an example of same in the next video thank you very much